Now, we've been talking about troubleshooting, you know, and we talk about, uh, you know, the ignition box, the pickup, you know, the electrical connections among all of those things, um, you know, the battery, always keep in consideration your battery. I've had batteries, you know, had a cable disconnect all of a sudden, now I don't have power. So, check all your electrical connections, you know, fuel tubings, uh, you know, your tuning and all of that. Now, how do we get better performance out of our engines? And this is not, I'm not trying to tell you how to tweak your engine to have more horsepower or anything like that, but is what things, uh, you know, are in the way that may, may be making your engine not have the performance that it should have. And I, I'm gonna talk about my experience and some of my friends. Um, and what I have on my hands right now, for example, is uh, a rib, rib cage, uh, and uh, a spacer, some people may call this like an intake manifold or you know it, it is a, the rib block spacer or whatever you want to call it, a rib cage. So this is the rib valve here. I have on this rib cage, I have rib valve still in one side. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can. Okay, those are the rib valve. And in this side I took it off and I have an open open rib, rib, valve, uh, rib block. So. Now, one of the things that, crazy enough, that one of my friends found once in one of his uh, engines, he was running an MLD-72 um, twin engine, seven, MLD-70 twin engine. And one of the things that he had, you see this nipple here, where this nipple connects, is a vacuum tubing that goes from the, this pacer to the carburetor that assists the pump in the carburetor to do its job, no, and pump fuel into the engine. So, one of my friends found one time that this nipple was kind of clogged from, from factory. So it had a little piece of brass inside, still connected inside, and it, the, there was no, the vacuum that it was, it, it had to be given or pulling, it was not given the exact amount. So one of my recommendations, Try to find a little uh, drill, a drill bit that is about the same size of that hole, if not a little larger, so you can even enlarge that hole a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, be careful, and you'll have better performance. So we've done that, we came across because of a problem, it helped us. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is Always make sure that these surfaces are very neat. And one thing that you can do is take a piece of sanding paper, let's say from 400 degree to 800, and put it on top of a very flat surface, like a glass, piece of glass, a glass table, something like that. You put the, the sandpaper on top of that table and take this and start sanding it till you get these surfaces corrected. Sometimes they have like little edges and stuff and you may, be, may have a, a leak of vacuum in, in, you know, in this area. So keep that in consideration. Same thing goes for your, for your rig cage. You know, make sure that it's really uh, you know, neat on all surfaces. And most importantly, here where the rib valve rest. So another thing you can do, taking the same principle, a, a piece of sand, sanding paper from like 400 to 800 grit, put it on top of a very flat surface. And I'm gonna try to give you a quick uh, example of something like that. Let's pretend this notebook is a very flat piece of um, glass. And then I'm putting it on top of a table, okay? And let's pretend this bag is a piece of sandpaper. So what, we, what you would do is put this like that on the edge, right on the edge, the, the, the sandpaper right on the edge of the glass, tape it. You tape the sandpaper so that it doesn't move anywhere. And then you, you take your rig cage and you're gonna put it along the, cor the corner like that. 
and you're gonna start sanding your way down like this till you get this surface completely neat looking like a glass very nice and neat and you do that on both sides of your rib block that should take care of certain performance issues that I've seen in, in some engines Okay, now another thing to consider in terms of performance is um, the carburetor itself. If you have debug a problem and, and you've, come, you've uh, ruled out any electrical part, you've ruled out the, the rib valve, the, the, the spacer, you know, all the surfaces flat, new, uh, let's say, new gaskets and everything and you still having problems uh, you know you, you know you have a good tuning another thing that you can check is your carburetor the carburetor itself and uh, you know ne it will never hurt doing uh, an overhaul on a carburetor you can open it you can buy a kit from any of the big uh, suppliers you know any, any any hobby shop buy a kit and rebuild that carburetor clean it very well that's another thing that you can consider if uh, if you ruled out everything else one thing that I wanted to mention now that we've been talking about a uh, spacer and the nipple and how this has a, a, a tubing that supplies vacuum and assists the the, um, the pump in the carburetor. Um, one thing that I want to talk about is, um, for example, something that's happened to me. Um, I have I have a couple planes with DLE 55, and I also have a plane with a DLE 20, and I'm going to use these engines because I'm familiar with them and one major difference between those a DLE 20 and a, and a DLE uh, 50 for example is that the DLE 20 will not have this nipple okay so the system in that engine you know it doesn't have that assistance of vacuum in in you know in the carburetor and what I have found when I leave my DLE 20 seating for months and then I want to start it after months it always gives me a hard time to start and uh, the reason behind it is that the gas that was inside the carburetor has evaporated and it has only left behind the oil so now so that so that you can understand this better so when we flip an engine it's going to try to pull and it's going to make the rib valves open, no? Open and close, open and close, open and close. So when they open, it's drawing fuel inside the engine, okay? So what happens is inside the carburetor, after, after time, the gas evaporates, it leaves behind the oil. And um, the, the pump inside, I don't know if you've ever seen a pump inside a, a Walbro carburetor, it's something like a rib valve. It's, 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 a, it's like the same material as a rib valve. It's something that really moves like that, even though you, you don't see it move, but it's something like that. It, it opens like that, lets fuel in, and then it, you know, it moves in two ways. So, if there's only oil on that um, membrane, the oil kind of act, act, it acts as a glue. So it kind of glues down the membrane of the pump inside, inside the carburetor. And what I've had, the, the problem I've had is I start flipping and I see no fuel being drawn from the tank to the, to the carburetor. And that's what's happening behind it. If you have that problem with a small engine like that, my suggestion is use a starter to try to start the engine. The starter is going to build up a lot more vacuum that is going to help aid break loose the mem membrane inside the carburetor again and it's going to start drawing fuel. Or if you don't have a starter, just try to see if you can uh, put a few drops of fuel directly. So, you know, Thinking that you can have access to the carburetor, I mean, you can have a little bottle with a long nose and try to put a few drops of fuel in, directly inside the carburetor and then flip. 
that should take care of it. Um, because I'm, I'm telling you this because I've been close to take a, an entire engine out to try to fix it because I, I think I have a major problem. And all there is is I needed to put a little bit of fuel in there to start it after a few months of being sitting down. So anyway, those are the things that I can uh, think of in terms of gas engines, you know, uh, performance and troubleshooting. There are some other things, you know, like I've, a lot of these um, Chinese uh, engines, they're, they're awesome because they're allowing us to, to get into a field that some of us might have never been able to get to, you know, because s some engines are very expensive and now you have all these Chinese manufacturers that are giving us the opportunity to, to get into certain, uh, you know, hobbies that we can have uh, afford before. However, whenever we buy a, a Chinese engine like that, we kind of roll in the dice and um, there, there may be quality issues with them. I've come across them. Um, I've seen a couple of friends of mine coming across them and one of the major issues that I've seen is cylinder problems. They don't have enough compression and sometimes it's just that there are imperfections inside the cylinder, you know, chamber. It may even be the piston itself or it may be the, the chamber itself where the piston runs. Uh, so I would say try, you, you can try new, a new piston ring. Um, on a couple of my planes I have Bowman rings. Uh, they are not an absolute fix. So Bowman rings are awesome. In certain cases, they may be a fix for your problem. In other cases, they will not be a fix for your problem. Okay, but it's, it's a good thing to, to try a different, a different uh, uh, ring, even if it's a stock one. You may have a stock ring that came defective, okay? You may have a, a, a piston that came defective, or you may have a, a, you know, a chamber uh, that is defective. So, you know, all of those things can happen um, and, and, and are things to consider whenever you're having problems with an engine. Um, so I hope that this video in any way, shape or form can help you uh, debug your problems and uh, I really appreciate you watching it and giving me some of your time. Thank you.